We interrupt all radio and television programs for an indefinite period. Please keep your radio and television sets turned on. This is an emergency. I repeat, this is an emergency. Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Sunday, January 27th, 1 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. You're looking at the current European GFS model, and it is insane. Let's just run it through here and pause it through your February 6th. Record snows in the south of France, up to 100 centimeters being predicted. Northern Spain, France border. They could see over 150 centimeters of snow tilting the map. Heads up, Valencia. And this snow is going to be all the way south into the growing region as well as northern Africa. But we'll be looking for heavy snows in the Alps to add insult to injury. Record snows in Norway and all of UK and Ireland predicted to get snow up to 50 centimeters in some areas. And that begins now in the northern regions moving through your Monday morning and moving south quickly through midweek. UK will see heavy snow moving in through the central regions. Heads up, Maverick Star. You could be buried, according to these models. <laughs> it's insane, I know. Al's in his hole. You've entered Boom Studios. And you know what that means. Keep calm. It's boom time. Goes X-ray flux. One minute data showing a C5 C5 flare kicking off earlier today. And the data just got jiggy. Thankfully, uh, the sunspot region has turning around the limb and has shut down as the sun shuts down. But this C flare may be on the WAS and low. Boom! We'll get back to it. Let's check out the Wasp and Lil Spiral. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, many people, you're right there with them. That's okay, kids. And Lil Spiral. Here's the spiral spinning and spinning. The only dot you should worry about is this little dot right here, Earth. There's Earth. Now, if we pause the spiral here on the 29th, January 29th, you can see this plume of plasma that has just shot off the sun. It's represented in the spiral arm here where this extreme red to white is occurring. And you can see it here, the radial velocity. So here's the density up top, radial velocity down below. But watch what happens to that plume as it hits Earth. Boom! Now, they're predicting the red expansion is after it passes Earth. And that's due to the radial velocity versus the density. But we could have potential geomagnetic storm here at the end of the month that could be epic. 31st. We're going to be watching it closely. To close the month, we could see some grid failures, moderate, very moderate. This is a low-level event. You could see here on the spiral how the major activity is out here. Had this been in by the planet, we'd be looking for major effects, but we could have minor perturbations due to this effect on the 31st at solar minimum. Watch the spiral. Getting jiggy. Now that wave of energy is going to pass Earth and move towards Mars and other planets and other satellites, including impending comets. So we're predicting that this affects uh, some incoming comets that are on their way towards the sun past Uranus. They may light these comets up. So the WAS Enlil clearly showing some effects. Now, let's blow up the sun and we'll look at that C5 solar flare. Blast off the sun if it wants to play. There it is. Watch it. Boom! Did you see it? <laughs> Keep calm. It's boom time. There it is. 
No, that's the fake one. But let's watch the real one. Ready? Wait for it. Oh, we already missed it. Here it comes. Earlier today. Ready? Watch it. Boom! C5. Live. You've watched it here on the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. You can see the spot turning around the limb here. You watch that, that C5 here approaching M. Now we haven't, the last M flare was last October, a year and a half ago. M1.1. And we're, we're just getting there. Biggest flare in a year. Yeah, I know. I'm a gear queer. And the government is back open. What is all this nonsense? Get to work, you pricks. Jesus. It's like they're on vacation or something. Update that. It will be the coldest in years for some. But this cold outbreak likely won't break all-time records. Because we are required to say that. We are required to report that the all-time record lows that you're about to experience are not that cold. We're required to do it. They will not break all-time records. We promise you. It will never happen. Ever. Infinity. In your lifetime. Boom! Never. We promise you. It's going to be the coldest in years, but it won't compare. Whoa! Breaking record cold hits Rockford. Busting all-time January 22nd record lows. Ever recorded. The Rock River in downtown Rockford is still flowing. But it's flowing underneath of ice. Put in a pinch of spice and that sub-zero cold enveloping the Rock River Valley, plunging everyone into a perpetual state of chills, has broken a record in Rockford. Rockford broke the January 26th record low temperature on Saturday morning, coming in at minus 21 degrees. The prior record was only 18 below, literally crushing it, which was set back in 82 according to the National Weather Service. By the way, 1982 was right before global warming, and we just beat the all-time record low by three degrees. The Rock River downtown was still flowing Friday morning, but by Saturday morning, largely had turned into ice. Ow! Stop knitting and watch this program. Now, do it. Get behind me. Kneel. Good job. Keep calm. It's boom time. It will be the coldest in years for some, but cold is likely not to break records. Okay, thanks, Weather Channel. All-time record lows broken in Rockford by three degrees, crushing the records exactly opposite of what the Weather Channel claimed. Potentially extremely record cold heading into Northern Illinois next week. Breaking all-time records. Wind chills to minus 50. Whether you like it or not, winter is in full force. It seems hard to imagine even colder temperatures than the dangerously record all-time lows we just reported on. But even colder air is on the way. By the time we wrap up January next Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we will have the potential to see the coldest air ever recorded in modern history in the United States. Record cold set to move into central Illinois next week. Dangerously cold starting Tuesday. There's your 8 p.m. It's the beginning of the Iguana Apocalypse 2019. Peoria, Illinois. Temperatures fell below zero across central Illinois on Friday morning with wind chills between minus 15 and minus 26. Those pricks. The bitter cold temperatures followed a string of cold fronts that have brought round after round of snow, rain, and ice to the region over the past few weeks. Unfortunately, the weather pattern remains very active, and the coldest temperatures ever seen, ever, are set to move in early next week. Do not tweak. Put on a jacket. <laughs> And make sure you have backup supplies, water, and food for up to a week. Because infrastructure may fail. <coughs> 
Not all regions have snow covering the ground, which insulates pipes. If you're in a region with low snow cover, expect there to be major malfunctions in your infrastructure. Low temperatures this morning, minus 35 in Grayling, minus 34 in Ross Common. Say it ain't Mayo at minus 32 F. Holy minus 30 F, Clear Lake. Trout Lake, minus 29 F. Look at the low temps in northern Michigan last night. Look at the low temps in the U.S. The warmest you could get in Florida was 63 at the tippy touch. Heads up, Key West. Big Pine Key. 45 to 38 from the Panhandle to the coast. And the entire country, even Cali, is getting jiggy with it. That looks chilly. I know, it's a little blurry. I can barely see it. Boom! <coughs> Madison sets new record low, even though the Weather Channel said it would never happen. A winter storm and more dangerous cold is on the horizon. 7 to 10 inches predicted. You're totally being flocked Sunday night through your early Tuesday. It's your lose day, Janesville. Heads up, Juno. Fond du Lac. You can suck it. Montawak and all you walkers up in Sheboygan. Watoma. Camp Douglas, you're buried. Wisconsin Dells, you better be ringing the bells and they better have snow chains. Lone Rock, Viraqua, <laughs> La Crosse, Decora. Can you get more pretentious than that? I mean, heads up. Dubuque, you're going to get some. Just a slathering. After standing for 56 years, the record low temperature for January 26 of minus 21 set back in 1963 was replaced this morning. Temperatures in Madison fell to 23 below zero. All-time record low ever recorded in human history. Modern human history. New record Madison officially has set a record low for January 26 at minus 23. The old minus 21 set back in 63 which was decades before global warming, was obliterated during global warming. <laughs> Boom! My mind has been blown, but I will keep calm as the earth and sun discharge their nonsense. But it's not just the cold of today. We're watching the threat of an even colder winter storm, followed by another colder blast of more air, and then colder and more cold, producing five to 10 inches of snow possible, heavy snow, blowing, drifting, blizzard conditions next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, lows minus 25, wind chills to minus 55, highs below zero, wind chills to minus 25. Ow! Oh my God! I, this is America I'm reading about. It says minus 55. <laughs> Um, I didn't move there. Winter storm Jaden will spread minus 55 temps next week, as well as snow from northern plains into the Midwest, east and south. Blizzard conditions possible in the northern plains. 8 to 12 Syracuse, 8 to 12 in Burlington, 3 to 5 in Concord, 3 to 5 in Elkins. Down in Asheville, you're going to get some. Atlanta, an inch. Birmingham, 1 to 3. Jackson, say it ain't so. 1 to 3 inches, Knoxville 1 to 3, Detroit 3, Chi Town 5 to 8, Mini 5 to 8, Fargo 3 to 5, minus 55 up there. <laughs> Winter Storm Jaden will track through the plains Midwest and East early in the week, which will be a tweak because it could be the worst winter you have ever experienced. Strong winds and heavy cold could lead to blizzard conditions in the Dakotas. Moderate to locally heavy snow parts of the Midwest and interior Northeast. Snow showers possible on the parts of the South early in the system. And then behind it, record cold will re-obliterate regions that have already been obliterated. Green Bay through Milwaukee, winter storm warnings. Here's your Sunday forecast. It will be balmy in Fargo.
And there comes Storm Jaden. Tuesday's forecast as the cold threat moves to the east. We're going to look at the models. The forecast showing moderate to heavy snow, heaviest snow up in New York State where they can get 18 to 24 off the lake there in Buffalo. Ho, ho. Northern Dax, Burlington, northern New Hampshire through central Maine, picking up the heaviest totals, 12 to 18, up to 24 inches in some parts of New Hampshire. And a heavy swath of 8 to 12 throughout the upper Midwest from Minneapolis down to Chi-Town. If you're on the west coast of Michigan, <laughs> get your shovel out. Chi Town forecast weekend deep freeze, snowstorms, then days of life threatening cold. He, do he doesn't even look like he's having a good time. Dangerously cold. Weekend weather will be followed by a storm that could leave more than six inches of snow on the ground before an Arctic blast brings a three-day stretch of life-threatening cold to the Chi-Town area. We warned you three days ago about this to start preparing. We gave you a seven-day window, actually, so it was four days ago. And now you're down to three. Three days until a stretch of potentially life-threatening cold in the Chicago area. A wind chill advisory covering all of northeast Illinois, parts of central Illinois, Wisconsin, northwest Indiana expired noon Friday, but will commence in just a few days. Do you have enough fuel oil? Do you have enough propane? Do you have enough wood on hand? What happens if the power goes out for four days? How will you keep from freezing to death? Ask yourself that question tonight. Answer it in the morning. Temperatures at O'Hare had risen only 3 degrees. The day's expected high with a wind chill of 11 below. Zero. Wind chill of 11 below zero, high of 3. The Weather Service warned a light snowfall Friday afternoon could make driving extremely hazardous during the afternoon rush. This type of brutal weather expected for much of the weekend. Even minor snowstorm can snarl traffic at these temperatures. Storms Sunday into Monday can leave six inches of snow or more on the ground, leading to a brief warm-up into the mid-minus 20s Monday. Uh, maybe that said mid-20s. What's the difference? Charlotte could see snow next week, National Weather Service forecasters say. <clears throat> Here's how and when. Take a look. That's what it'll look like. Four inches or more up in this region, and it gets lighter down there. Check the map out. I don't have time. I've been talking for hours. Shy town weather, more snow coming. Temps to drop again. I just talked about this. Apparently, there's lots of articles. Al Gore, migrant caravans are victims of global warming. If they're coming up through this region, there'll be snow. <laughs> Hitting the mountains in central Mexico. So, clearly, the global warming is causing the migrant crisis. It's so hot here, I have three, only three heaters tonight. Just three. Former Vice President Al Gore, who was living in a hand-dug well in my shed, said the recent Central American migrant caravans seeking asylum in the U.S. were fleeing the ravages of global warming. Al, how did you give this quote? I know, I know. The bun cake, whatever. Gore said the so-called dry corridor, which includes El Salvador, Guatemala, and Andorras, is the most vulnerable region in the world to global warming. Funny thing is, Al just told me that he doesn't even know any information about those regions. He made it up. The fact that they've gone without a harvest this year is not because of warming. It's because of cold weather and drought which are predicted by the Grand Solar Minimum and not by global warming. 
I know, Al. Sh shut it. GFS model. Let's walk it through. Here's the rest of your weekend, and let's pause it. Through your Sunday, the snow is going to move into North Dakota. You're going to see moderate to light snow from Maine all the way in through Indiana, all of Ohio, picking up flurries for the next 24 hours. And then Jade and dips down that Alberta clipper coming in there. Boom! And by Tuesday, snow will fall as south as Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia. The heaviest snows in a strip through Saskatchewan, south through North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan. Through your Wednesday, heavy snows dumping in northern New York. Up through Maine. Picking up more snow in southern Appalachia. A huge slathering through southern Canada. And the dumping will continue. Dangerous cold developing this week in north central U.S. Bitter cold temperatures will give way to a potentially record-breaking push of Arctic air this week. Regardless of what the Weather Channel has to say, the wind chills as low as minus 40 or colder will be expected across the northern plains and Great Lakes region. In addition, wide swaths of heavy snow can be expected across the area. The system will push east and south, bringing snow to over 40 states in the upper tier. With much below normal temperatures and wintry precipitation as far south as Louisiana. Winter storm watches and warnings up through Wisconsin, southern and central, southern Minnesota, northern Iowa. Say it ain't soda. Northeast Illinois, northwest Indiana, Chi-Town also under warnings and watches. Northeast Michigan, Gaylord, heads up. This is moving into the... Uh, Dakotas as well, with heavy wind warnings all the way out to Montana. This is going to develop into blizzard warnings and watches in the next, the coming days as a swath of heavy snow moves down through this region, whew, right through the uh, <coughs> eclipse zone. Boom! Heads up. You know where you're at. Let's check out the European GFS model. <laughs> it's not too shoddy. Boom! Oh my goodness. This is devastating. Europe hasn't seen anything like this for a very long time. At least since back during the last solar minimum, 2010-ish. And it is my prediction that this pattern will last well through February into March. So we're looking at four to six weeks of heavy snow which will blow. And there's no Santa, so there's very little ho, ho, ho. But there is a boom. Oh my goodness. Keep calm. We'll get there. Let's watch how the snow develops. Let's check the la next 48 hours. Heavy snow moving into northern UK. Everyone will be affected. Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Heads up, Anik Wittenhus. You're going to get one to three. Let us know how it looks. And then the snow moves into Europe. Take a look at what happens next. As we head into the weekend, and your February 1st, the heavy snows begin to pile up everywhere. So we're going to be watching this closely as the next seven days progress and see how close the GFS models match the reality. But if anything like what's predicted right here occurs, we're going to be reporting on record-breaking snows in northern Spain. It's insane, and the Alps will continue to tilt the earth regardless of what the fear mongers say. You can barely hear crickets from the global warming alarmists. There's so much data to shove in their face. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Barren Island Volcano, Chevaluche, Tucono, Planchon, Petaroa, Sabancaya. 
20,000 feet at Shivalush today. Let's see if we have a live stream. There's the webcam, Kvert. Let's go there. It's late, it's probably dark. Mm -hmm. Oh, we can see some lava glow, boom! Holy macaroni, Shivalush glowing live. Before your very lives. There it is. Facts are in, you just, you're one of the few hundred people on earth that know that Shivalush is erupting now. Explosive activity continues at Shivalush. Tokyo warned about a volcanic ash plume that rose 20,000 feet altitude today, flight level. Moving 25 knots to the southeast, Dukono, continuous volcanic ash, Planton Petoroa, weak emissions to 15,000 feet. Holy sheet. Did I do that? What did I just do? Did I break it? Shivalush glowing. This show is definitely not blowing. Seismic update. Latest big boom, 5.1 northeast of Hernani, Filipinos. There's that 6.2 in Fiji, kicking off at 579 kilometers. Multiple aftershocks happening today. No other quakes of note. Moderate uptick on the ring of fire. It will soon be our funeral pyre. M2.6, Three Rivers, Texas. Could be a submarine landslide headed your way. Coming out from Science Daily, we need to rethink everything we know about global warming. You know why? New calculations show scientists have grossly underestimated the effects of air pollution. Yes grossly underestimated it because it continues to pollute major cities and people breathe it. Yet, you are taxed for your carbon dioxide output, which, by the way, is non-toxic and delicious. Plants love it. New research shows that the degree to which aerosols cool the earth has been grossly underestimated. Now, Heinrich Svensmark has been screaming at the top of his lungs for decades that they were wrong. And he's right now. But they don't mention him in this article. But they claim that it necessitates a recalculation of climate change models to more accurately predict the pace of global warming. Because there is none. Because man cannot affect the climate. He can only kill the babies with his pollution. The solution is to kill the pollution. CO2 is not included unless you're diluted. And I wasn't even fluted tonight. But my attitude is your quaalude to the prelude of the whatever rhymes with that. We need to rethink everything, including our phraseology. Volcanoes and climate, large-scale volcanic activity may last only a few days, but the massive outpouring of gases, ash, and particulates, including aerosols, can affect climate patterns for years. Not man. It's not you. It's not CO2. It's the volcanoes. Did you know when Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines, June 15, 1991, an estimated 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide and ash particles blasted more than 12 miles into the atmosphere? Well, the eruption caused widespread destruction, destruction and loss of human life. Gases and solids injected into the stratosphere circled the globe for three weeks. Eruptions like this magnitude can impact global climate. What say you? I say most people watching know that. And if you don't know why, it's simply called the albedo effect. These particulates get into the upper, lower stratosphere, above the atmosphere, and they maintain for long periods. They reflect sunlight back into space, preventing the heating of the surface 
as it would normally do. Same thing with ice caps and snow cover. They reflect the radiation back into space via light and prevent it from warming the Earth. Now, preventing the warming of the Earth we also call cooling. And they also call us deniers because we believe in that fact. Yet, it's all over mainstream science that all deniers believe in cooling and that all believers believe volcanoes cause cooling, which makes us deniers. You can't make that up, but, but you might as well. <laughs> hey, have you heard the magnetic pole shifting? Well, if you haven't, it is. And you must have just got here. <coughs> now, almost a decade ago, ESA Swarm was launched into space. A multi-million dollar project to study the magnetic field of our planet. And what they give us is a trickle down of information with a five year delay. But if you watched our early podcast with Maverick Star Reloaded over at poleshiftnews.com, which we're looking at right now, he is the inventor of the TriMag magnetogram. And his TriMag data is an independent citizen science initiative to measure the North Pole migration. And soon we will be measuring the North and South Pole migration with your help. Clearly see the shift here. So you're looking at some of the TriMag data, which Maverick Star Reloaded is responsible for. We'll get to some of these magnetic reversals in a moment, but let me load a few pages. Now, over 3,000 of you have already gone over there and subscribed over the last week, and that's awesome. So if you don't know about his YouTube page, I'll link it below. You know, we can get him to 20,000 soon enough, and he's well on his way. As our magnetosphere wanes, as the magnetic reversal continues, cosmic rays increase. And I feel like a broken record, but here it is. Here's the data. The dose rate to the left, time on the bottom. Here's 2015 here, here's now. There are the graphs. Biggest upticks in Washington State and Oregon and Maine. These are all northern tier states. You guys are getting the heaviest dose of cosmic radiation. In five years, it'll be as if you're flying at 40,000 feet all day if you live in these places. Safest place is south of 40. Especially in the west here, Four Corners region. Safest zone for cosmic rays, I'm circling. Picking it up. I just put it down. Like a solar flare C5 boom. And a magnetic reversal that you're living. I just put it down. You know who else put it down? The Ukrainian government. Paper coming out on the 11th. Says a bunch of sh in Ukrainian. Don't even pretend you can read it. And they have some killer graphics too. 
And they comment in Ukrainian too. It's not even a made up language because I'm Ukrainian. Now, Transpicious News reached out to us. They want to uh, do an interview. I don't know if that will ever come to fruition. But they picked up on this Ukrainian news. And the Ukraine is claiming that the North Pole is in the Ukraine. But NASA and NOAA claim it's way over here. Off this map. So what's going on? What is going on? What the f is going on? Well, if you watch the video that Mavstar and I did earlier today, you know that the pole is in two places. One over here. One over here. And that most compasses are reading up here in the Arctic which is where the north rotational pole is. So for all of your life, you pretty much get a compass reading up here, even as the poles were spreading. Because if you're far enough down on the globe, south of 50 or 60 degrees latitude, you're going to get a reading up as the average of the poles, which are both north, 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 two norths here. You're going to get a reading up here in the middle, which is where the rotational pole is up in the Arctic, right here. But soon, this is the stronger of the two poles. We'll be moving into Russia here, into Siberia. And as it does, most compasses are going to start to point to the east if you're in North America. It's going to blow your mind. There'll be a tipping point day when compasses will point east-ish. Actually, northeast. But it will be really weird. Northeast will become north because the magnetic pole, as according to a compass, not the rotation. Sun will still rise and the moon will still rotate where it's doing it all the time. That's based on the rotational pole, not the magnetic pole. This is a hypothetical pole that you can't see at night from the stars spinning. It's emanating from the planet through the magnetic field. Now, these magnetic field lines are important because we live in an electric universe and everything is controlled through electricity, electromagnetic electricity. And this, these magnetic dipoles control the polar vortex, the climate on Earth, and many other things. And it is going to go haywire as this baby moves into Siberia. All bets are off on anything you've ever known to be normal, that won't be the thing. Shit's about to hit the fan. The French know it. French yellow vests defy Macron again in tense protests. Boom! I love these yellow vests. Love them. Solar flare love them. Magnetic reversal love them. Boom! Do it. Viva la Révolution! Viva! Viva la Révolution! Viva! En vive! <laughs> Do it! Why won't you enlarge? There are the pigs. With round the clock updates from Reuters journalists, here are today's top stories. Hundreds are feared dead in a mining disaster. The shutdown is over, now the hard part begins. A century on, an Iraqi shipyard stays afloat. This is Reuters Now. I have a voice. 
hundreds of people are missing after a dam at a Brazilian iron mine burst. It's devastated the mine itself and a local town. The death toll is expected to be severe. The mining site alone had some 300 workers, according to its owning company, and only about a third had been accounted for as of Saturday morning. The torrent is said to have hit at lunchtime on Friday and tore through the mine's cafeteria and offices. This is not the first major disaster linked to the mine's owner either, a corporation called Valley SA. Three years ago, Brazil suffered the worst environmental catastrophe in its history when another dam burst at a mining project that Valley was partnered in poured toxic waste into a river. Nineteen people were killed in that incident. Valley's chief executive said from Rio de Janeiro that Saturday's disaster was a, quote, human tragedy, but may have less environmental damage this time. The Brazilian government has ordered Valet to suspend operations at the site, and prosecutors are also attempting to freeze $1.3 billion of the company's assets for damages. President Jair Bolsonaro has visited the area. A 35-day struggle between President Trump and Congress to end the partial government shutdown is finally over. I am very proud to announce today that we have reached a deal to end the shutdown and reopen the federal government. Now, the hard part begins. Republican and Democratic lawmakers will have three weeks to strike a deal on border security that will satisfy both, both sides. sides. <laughs> Yo. If you believe any of this nonsense is in your best interest, keep watching. Yellow vest protests, multinational corporations killing hundreds of people with no one being held accountable again and again is just going to continue. This is not a new trend. This is the trend. If you have money, you're innocent. A few scapegoats get hung up with the cloth, but the majority of rich people walk. Poor people spend their lives in jail so that rich people can, like George Bush, sell them commissary. Did you know that the Bush family owns all of the commissary for prisons? The majority, they get the kickbacks. The Bushes. I know because I was in prison and I researched the topic. And there's no food in those commissaries. There's no nutrition. It's all garbage from multinational corporations genetically modified. I hope the French yellow vests continue to grow and they burn France to the ground because we're better off starting over from scratch. This system is broken. The planet is polluted. The air is destroyed. The water flowing on the surface is poison. The groundwater toxified. Why would we continue this protocol? It's nonsense. Here's the nonsense. 1,500 CO2 spewing private jets descended on Davos to discuss the climate change catastrophe. 1,500 jets. Fraud alert. You want to know the truth? I'm going to give it to you. The cure for cancer. The Rick Simpson protocol. This is Jindrick Bear and Rick Simpson himself. This is the 2013 dossier, the original with the 2015 update. If you want to know how to make your own cancer medicine, medicine for hundreds of ailments, you just got it for free. Do not sell it. Do not print it for the benefit of anyone but yourself. This is for you to download now 
and survive and thrive in the future. Back pain, chronic pain, ulcers and moles, blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, suppositories, PMS, menopause, body weight, anxiety, paranoia, depression, MS, addiction, sleeping, insomnia, glaucoma, restoring eyesight. You can cure it all yourself. Trust me. Any questions about it, I would be happy to answer. <clears throat> I'm an expert at the Rick Simpson protocol. I make this medicine. I can teach you how. That's what you got to start with. There's your starting point. <laughs> the sun just sent out a C5 flare. The most activity in almost a year. Magnetic reversal is upon us. Are you prepared? Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Be safe. We love you. Even Paul Begley. Fraud. <laughs>